Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I launched an e-commerce brand that's valued at $10 million. My brand is called Wallaby Goods. I worked at Amazon for five years in the advertising division. I was one of the first hires. I have a lot of experience working with top 1,000 Amazon sellers. I took that experience, launched my agency called Alt Group, which is a top Amazon advertising agency. And now I'm really focused on building out brands. I want to release this content because I feel like there's a lot of fake news out there about how to build brands on Amazon and Shopify and everything in between. I actually applied my own money, built my own brand. It scaled very quickly. I'm doing over $10 million a year right now with my brand. And I'm gonna show you guys how you can do the same, if not better. The process is not extremely complicated, but it is well gatekeeped. So let me show you exactly how I did it. Let me explain a little bit about Amazon. And then I'm going to be getting into Helium 10, Alibaba, importing, and everything in between. I wanna keep this video fairly succinct, but I will be getting into later videos about how to actually apply the process, how to actually import products, and I'll make it very, very clear. Without further ado, let me get into it, show you guys my brand and exactly how I apply the tools in order to grow. So kicking things right off, my brand is called Wallaby Goods. As I said, you can search it on Amazon, you can look me up on LinkedIn, and you see right here that my branding is very consistent across my products, it's very premium. Let's just click on one of my listings, for example. You'll see most of my products have above a 4.7. If they don't, they'll be there soon. Looking at this product, Product, you'll see that it's a bundle. A bundle is a really good opportunity for Amazon because it gives the customer everything they need. There's a lot of products on Amazon that don't have everything the customer needs. So if you can give the customers everything they need, then obviously they're gonna look to you as a potential opportunity for purchase. This branding, this packaging is all work that you can do through a freelancer or a contractor. We work with very large brands like Veridesk, Perch, Sabra Hummus. But if you're gonna get started yourself, you can do so just on your own some. How much does it cost to start an Amazon business? I recommend honestly having probably about seven to $8,000 to get started. I launched this brand for $25,000. Again, I wanted to go in deeper. I invested my own capital to grow this. And I also have the agency resources of my agency alt group. We do everything from creative branding. So it was a little bit easier for me already having that infrastructure. But again, you can do it all through Upwork, which I will show you as part of this video. People do not read on Amazon or anywhere anymore. They watch YouTube videos or they look at the main images on Amazon. Think about how you shop. So it's very important nowadays that you, if you're going to launch a brand on Amazon, and I'll say brand for a reason, that you have very great imagery for your products and you really articulate benefits to your product. One of the best ways to actually launch a product on Amazon is to identify the problems that another product has that's doing a certain level of sales volume per month. And if you can solve the problems of another product, then you have a really big opportunity on your hands. When I was launching Wallaby, the process that I took was I initially wanted to launch a food product. And when I was launching a food product, I found it very hard to purchase the package for my food product on Amazon. And I didn't see any sellers that I felt like I could trust in order to package my food product, which was going to be a sweet potato chip. And I started to see other people weren't able to find solutions as well, because a lot of the products in this Mylar bag category, which is a type of bag that you use to put food in, were based in China. And really, most of them had under 4.5 stars. So I said, okay, there's clearly an opportunity here if I can improve upon the problems that a lot of these products have and add these as solutions to my product. So when you say, when I say solutions, this this product, for example, is a bundle. It comes with oxygen absorbers. It comes with labels. And what's really cool is it has a rip tab, stores for 25 to 30 years. It has an internal aluminum layer. I really dove in deep to understand the problems of this market before I launched my product. So as I said, a big part of selling on Amazon is taking the product that you have an idea for and getting ideas from the problems that competitor products have. So this is another top brand in the category, but I really didn't trust their solution. And when I looked at the ratings for their products, a lot of them have under 4.5. When a product has under 4.5 rating, it means that there's a lot of opportunity that you can implement the problems that their product has and make them solutions for your product. And if you can solve those problems, you will thereby capture the sales of that product. That's especially intriguing when you have a product that's doing a lot of volume like this product, but it only has a 4.4 out of 5. Volume means sales. So if we look at the customer feedback, we'll notice that a lot of times the customer feedback is very consistent around these products and you can aggregate the customer feedback and actually improve upon it. So these bags are trash. I held the bags up to light and I could see the light at the seams, holes, absorbers didn't work. So we've identified three problems that are fairly consistent with this product. We'll jump into the two-star 
reviews for this product. The oxygen absorbers didn't work. They don't really fit in buckets. Oxygen absorbers don't work. Okay. Let's jump into three stars. Oxygen absorbers don't work. They're missing bags. So I don't need to go into every product in this category, but the feedback is very consistent. If we look at other products, we'll see other Mylar bags have very problematic reviews where there was holes in the bags. They weren't thick enough or the oxygen absorbers didn't work. So again, again, jumping back to an opportunity that I recognized almost immediately is can I make sure that I provide oxygen absorbers that work? Can I make sure there's no holes in the bags? And then again, I will mark it and say that I solve these problems, show my products out front. My oxygen absorbers come with indicators that actually show that the absorbers are effective. They change colors if they're exposed to air. So again, I'm solving a lot of problems and solving the problem is the name of the game when you do Amazon private label. Private label is no longer just creating commoditized products. You can't just sell something and hope to compete on price. You have to compete on value and brand differentiation. I built a brand. Again, you saw my products. You saw that I differentiated. And again, it's put together very nicely. Whereas, you know, when you look at this product, who's copied me somewhat since, but the packaging and the branding looks a little, you know, out there. It doesn't look, these are not real photographs. They're all renders. This is clearly a fake picture. There's a lot of opportunity, right? For how they create their listings as opposed to the quality of my listings. Very premium, clean, and put together in a very streamlined way that's trustworthy to potential customers. So now I'll be getting into how I actually would look for ideas for products, which I think is a very important topic. And we'll jump into Helium 10 Black Box. Helium 10 is one of the best Amazon tools. It's essentially created to be a holistic tool to manage your Amazon business. I am a Helium 10 partner. You can save 20% by using my Helium 10 link, which will be in the description of this video and in my bio. But I like Helium 10 and I stand by tools that I actually use. I use this every day. For refinement, they have one of the best tools in order to find products. So you'll see they have a ton of tools here, which is good. I think it's packed with value, whereas a lot of tools are not packed with value. You kind of just get like one or two things. But one of my favorite tools under the product research tab is Black Box. And why I like Black Box is it can give you ideas for categories you might not be thinking about. I'm sure you've heard this before, but the best categories on Amazon are categories that are not sexy. And when I say not sexy, it's they're not overdone. So at a time, beds and mattresses were not sexy, but then Casper, Tough the Needle, Purple came along, the founder of those companies created interesting, engaging brands, and then they became sexy categories because people realized that there was an opportunity there. But a lot of times in these unsexy categories, there's a lot of revenue opportunity. So you need to look typically in a tool in order to find those opportunities, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So within Amazon, there's several categories of refinement in terms of best categories, but typically there's a few categories you wanna stay away from when you first start. I would say baby is not the best category, just because of liability. Supplements and vitamins is a great category, high margin, but very competitive. Unless you have a really differentiated idea, I typically would stay away from that. Electronics can be tough for your first product just because customers have trouble and ultimately you kind of get bad reviews, unfortunately, in that category, unless you have a really great idea or something that's very well put together with clear instructions. So typically I recommend that people start either in the arts and crafts category Handmade products are really good. Handmade products have a lot of margin. Typically, they're the, it's the highest margin category on Amazon. I have friends that sell in this category with 40, 50% margins. Your product doesn't actually have to be handmade. It just needs to seem like it's handmade. A lot of stuff on Etsy nowadays is made in factories. And home and kitchen, kitchen and dining. Kitchen and dining and home and kitchen are typically combined, but they're actually the highest volume category on Amazon, the most sales overall on Amazon companies' categories. Think about cutting boards, knives, things like that. Most people go to Amazon to buy anything from their for their home and kitchen on Amazon. That's why it's such a large category. Office is a good category, but a little bit harder to build a brand. Patio, lawn and garden is a great category. Pet supplies is a great category. Interesting statistic. There's actually more pets in the US than there is children under 18. So there's a lot of dogs in the US and a lot of people love their dogs. A lot of people are willing to try new products for their pets. So that's typically a category that I recommend people look at. But just for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to start off with arts, crafts and sewing because I really like this category. And it's fairly simple to build a brand in this category because not a lot of people have gotten into it. It's kind of an underexplored category for the most part. And what I'll do is I'll look for the monthly minimum revenue of at least 20,000. So that means that the product is selling at least $20,000 a month, which is important to validate that there's a level of demand for the product. And then the review rating, the max, again, looking back to how I created my Mylar bags is I'll look for a product that has under a 4.4, ideally. So the review max is 4.4. And what that means is 
is that the product has a lot of demand. It's selling a lot per month, but overall the rating is not that high. So that means that we can capture the improvements of that product by looking at the customer feedback and then launch a product that's superior and thereby creating a better product and get the sales from that product in turn. So let's do a quick search and see what it turns up with. So here we are, we've got a number of different search results and we're seeing some pretty interesting products here. So let's jump into this. Okay, this is interesting. This is knitting yarn cotton to the core knit and crochet yarn. And you see they have a lot of colors here. I like this because it's easy to build a brand around this category. They've got a video, but they've only have three images, which is not a lot for this product. That's obviously an opportunity. Let's jump into the ratings. We see they have a 4.3 out of five. So clearly customers are buying this product because it's doing $132,000 a month, but there's a lot of negative feedback. Smaller quality problems, too many brake repairs in a mini skin. We have to learn what that means. Very tiny. Okay, so it's just not a lot of yarn for the value. Clearly people feel this is just not a lot of value, not 100% cotton. Okay, so what we can do is not 100% cotton, very thin. I'm aggregating feedback, tiny. Again, this is not rocket science, but people say can't find free patterns. That's interesting. So we could actually create free patterns slash tutorials. Okay. Okay, let's see this top critical review. I gave this a three because the yarn uh, I was not. There was hair surrounded, there was not, and there was hair. So it's like there's like a quality control problem, honestly, because there's like human hair in here. That's not good. So high quality control slash having an inspection is something we can advertise against. Thin, thin. A lot of people say thin and soft very consistently. This product might actually be like small. It's just they've obviously not done a good job in their images describing the product. So then people are surprised when it actually arrives and it's much smaller than they expected. So clear representation of value. And I imagine yarn is very cheap. So these guys are selling this yarn for 27, almost $27. So clearly there's an opportunity here. Let's watch this video. This is also a fake, what I call a fake video. So it's just images overlaid. It's much better to create a video showing the actual product. So this is not showing the actual product. What you can also do on Amazon is jump over to the brand's storefront. Okay, this is nice too, because we know that they have a lot of other products. So, so we could create other products to sell. What you can also do is where it says sold by KnitPal, that's the brand that's selling this product. We could click on that, scroll down. So this company is actually based in the US, but they're just not doing a good job. Sometimes you'll see companies that are doing a bad job like this are based in China because they don't have a familiarity with US consumers. Just so you guys know, let's analyze another product. I did like that product because it was selling for between $26 and $46 price point. So there's definitely margin there for that product. We typically don't want to do anything that's under $20 on Amazon because you start to get a little bit thin margined. I like this product actually. It's very interesting. The branding of this page is very good. So I might stay away from this, but let's see the feedback. So it's a face paint kind of marker and it has a lot of reviews. So sometimes we might want to stay away from that. Hard to remove, cheap, but okay. My face is still colored. My kid's face still colored. Doesn't last long the best. This is a pretty good product because like we could make better face paint crayons, but there's some liability here. So I'd probably stay away from that. This plywood is selling for $80. It's doing $60,000 a month and the listing is okay. The plywood's used for laser engraving. It's a very simple product to put together. You could advertise it more effectively towards laser engraving. They have no video, so adding a video to this listing would definitely be helpful. We can say they have a 4.5 out of 5. Let's see the negative feedback. It seems to have a coating on it. It's supposed to be unfinished. Quality problem. Oh, so the voids. Oh, boom. So here what you can do actually is very straightforward is you could create like a plywood company for laser engraving. And then we can see these voids here. We'll just do this. Remember, this is yarn. This is plywood. And then we'll see the plywood has voids. So 
So we'll need less voids in our plywood, but we know plywood's obviously a high demand category with laser engraving and laser printing and everything. This product's obviously doing a lot of sales. So we could look to capture the sales of this product if we created a larger art supply brand, which would be pretty interesting. This product's interesting too. It's an electronic a tufting gun. I like that it's selling for $170. It's a pretty cool product. I've seen these on TikTok too. It's pretty cool. So you basically can like create fabric rugs and bags and interesting things. And we're on the seller's brand page. We can see that the seller is based in China. That's probably why their listing is not very good. They sell other products. Typically, you want to stay away from electronics to start off selling on Amazon. But I do like this product because you could bundle it with tutorials. You, I'm sure you could put better instructions of how the product works. I'm sure you could design a better version of this product because it has 9% one-star reviews. Did not work. Very cheaply made. Product does not work. Not satisfied. Stop working. Did not work. <laughs> okay, you could create one that worked and then probably capture a lot of sales. Uh, but I've been seeing this a lot on TikTok. So it is definitely an interesting product. You don't need to create all these colors, too. So we could probably do a bundle that included everything you needed to get started. I imagine you need a few of these different components. We could likely bundle this all together and we know the price is pretty high. I'll just save this product a tufting gun. So, so far, you know, we found three products and what I also like to do is just here, something I'll just show you guys quickly is I'll copy the link for this product and then I will also screenshot reviews so I can send this to the factories on Alibaba. Okay, so now we've identified a few different products. I'm gonna go back to the yarn because I still think that's a really good product to start off with on Amazon. So jumping back into the yarn, I'm gonna click on the ASIN in the URL. That's the Amazon standard identification number. That's basically the equivalent of the UPC on Amazon. I'm gonna click that and then I'm going to go to the Amazon Revenue Calculator tool. You can do Amazon Revenue Calculator just to show you guys how I get here again. Continue as a guest. And then all you have to do is copy that ASIN that I got, search for that. We can see that if we were to use Amazon's fulfillment, which is what we would want to do, and we're selling this product for $25, the cost of the goods I doubt is more than like four or $5, but the net margin is pretty high for this product. And let's get into how we could potentially start calculating this. So we're going to be here, caught into the cord in crochet yarn, and we'll jump into Alibaba. Everyone's been on Alibaba, I hope, at this point, and poked around. And we'll see this knit and crochet yarn, very similar yarn here. This is very identical. This is selling for like a dollar ninety-three cents, thirty-six cents, a dollar eighty. So that was a three-pack, you know. So we'll assume it's like three to four dollars to assemble that product. Again, cost of goods sold. There will be other associated costs which we need to build in. So the margin would likely come down probably another ten percent bringing this to about 31% margin. But overall, a really good product. And we identified several opportunities with the product that we wanted to solve. So people obviously said it was thin, tiny, wasn't clear, all those different things. What we'll then do on Alibaba is we'll start to identify manufacturers of this product. And we always on Alibaba want to filter on the left here by verified suppliers. We'll do that refinement. And then it'll show us suppliers that Alibaba has vetted because there's a lot of junk on Alibaba. You typically want to make sure you're working with legit companies. And let's just start clicking into a few of these. Do, do, do. I'm just going to do three, just for example. We can see these are legit factories. Nice product. And it's very easy to contact these factories. Scroll down. It's, it's nice to see that the factories have like good imagery and everything like that. What I also like to see here on the right side, which is very important on Alibaba, this supplier has been in business for nine years. They're based in China. Response time is very quick. Store ratings of 4.9 out of 5. And they've done over $100,000 in transaction. Their main markets, interestingly, are South America, which can be a good thing because if you're their main customer in North America, wherever you might be, that's not their main market. They're more interested in working with you. So what I also like to do is I'll click on their storefront so you can see all their different products. And then I'll chat now, chat now, which will bring up the chat menu. And what you always want to say to these suppliers on Alibaba is establish that you are legit. So they don't want to work with anyone that's not legit. They want to work with large companies as would make sense. But I truly believe in faking it till you make it. That's what I've always done. <laughs> and it takes gets you to a level that people trust you are legit and they want to work with you. So I will just say, hi, I am a top Amazon seller. I plan to launch a line of knitted 
marketing products I would like to partner with a top manufacturer. I am getting quotes from multiple partners and hope you will offer your top price. So what have we done here? We've said we have a top Amazon seller launching a line of knitting products. We're no Amazon and we're getting quotes from multiple partners, which establishes that we're not just going to get a quote from them. So they're going to be more likely to give us their best pricing. What I'll then do is say some problems that I noticed with competitor products are I need to solve these with my product. And then doing some quick math, we can establish how many products we're looking to order. Again, we would get more specific on this when we're actually launching this product, but assuming each product's probably gonna cost about three to four dollars, we can assume four dollars. We're probably gonna order maybe a thousand units to start. Okay, startup cost might be about four thousand just from this. There's obviously other costs, but just starting here, okay, about four thousand dollars. My first order will be 1,000 units. And then what we can also establish quickly is colors. And what I like to do is, Dan, just quickly on Amazon yarn. Obviously, there's a lot of different colors. What we can do to understand the top colors is we can go back to black box, find by arts and crafts, and then includes yarn doing at least 100 thousand dollars a month and let's refine by that and see what that yields for colors all right so we're seeing a lot of neutral colors this is interesting so it's actually interesting to see some of these various colors people like these too but we can refine by monthly revenue here on the top right and we'll quickly see that this kind of multicolored yarn is actually doing very well that other seller wasn't selling this multicolored yarn so we don't have to start off with every color obviously but this marsh color is very interesting we'll obviously quickly expand so we can say we want to start with maybe five colors to start 200 units each i'd probably start with this marsh color knowing that it's selling really well for this other brand and we can also also ask for top sellers from the factory. I plan to start with five colors. What do you recommend as top sellers in the US market? I would also be interested if you sell other knitting supplies as I would like to make a bundle product. Okay, so I've said a couple of things here. Obviously, I want to make a bundled product. I want to do 1,000 units. I'll do five colors, so that would result in 200 units each. And we're off to the races pretty much so far. You know, we've identified a really big category on Amazon. We found an interesting supplier. What we'll also do is send the same message to these two other suppliers that I found just to make sure that they're legit, and then we'll get going. We'll then want to wait to see what the reply is here, understand the costs, and I'll get help you guys understand what those costs will be. But generally, we'll know that this will like be a profitable product for us, but we'll make sure the math is shored up. What I then like to tell you guys and teach you guys is the power of Upwork. I am not an official Upwork partner. I don't know why, but I'm a big fan of Upwork. And something that's cool about Upwork is you can pretty much find anything you need to start your business on Upwork. Anything from honestly having someone completely run your Amazon business all the way to getting the packaging and branding. So let's find someone that can make us, you know, branding that's obviously really good and unique, like these pages. Obviously Obviously, this seller is doing a really good job. But as we said before, Amazon seller who was selling the yarn was not doing a particularly great job, right? They only had this one image. So what we'll do is we can hop over to here and we can do product branding search here. And we'll quickly find people that do a good job with packaging and branding. This guy's $45 per hour, has earned over 400 k which is obviously really good. $89 an hour. Keeping in mind that this is for your brand, which is really important. For packaging and branding, I typically like to hire people that are in the US, UK, or Ukraine. And the reason for that is I just find they're a little bit more familiar with the US market. Sometimes people that are in Pakistan are not as familiar artistically with the demand of US customers. So just keep that in mind. But hypothetically, Roberto looks interesting. Scroll down. 
And what I like about Upwork is you can see the reviews, you can make a contract. And if you're not satisfied, you basically don't have to pay on Upwork, which is great. And we're seeing that this guy's done some really interesting packaging. Can you imagine having a yarn brand that's, you know, has the same level of packaging design as Roberto did for this company? I have no affiliation to Roberto or Upwork again, but I do like his work, you know, and we could invite him to a job to say, you know, we're launching a yarn company and we could use your help and we'd love to have you kind of help articulate the vision of a bundled yarn product. We think it's a big opportunity on Amazon. Going back here, let's see if there's anyone else that looks good. Mark is 80 bucks an hour, which is a little bit more expensive, but he has really high job satisfaction. This is a cool product that he branded. Again, just tell him about your project, what you're looking to do, and then you'll have a phone call with him and he'll be able to help you out with that. A lot of nice stuff here. So then what it comes down to is you work with Roberto and or Mark and you'll communicate between him and the factory once they reply to you. And once they reply to you with the pricing, you can send them your branding and packaging and then you can start manufacturing of the product. I always recommend for your first order that you pay through Alibaba and you pretty much are rolling at that point. It's honestly that straightforward. Once you have your product in production, you are going to want to make sure that you obviously have a trademark on your brand. So to get a trademark, I recommend checking out the Amazon IP accelerator. This is a really cool program because it helps you get your trademark and you can get access to creating a brand store much more quickly. And basically there's a list of law firms that'll help you get your trademark. Typically it's about $1,500 to get the trademark. Pretty straightforward process though. And then this would be an example of a trademark like KnitPal is their branded trademark. So that would be your brand here. Wallaby is my trademark. And then an option for freight is this company called Freightos. So you can, depending on the quantity of inventory that you're importing, you can use a tool like this to do the freight and you would contact them and they'll help you handle the freight going directly to Amazon, which is pretty easy. It's honestly a less complicated part than you'd think. Also, I'd recommend is getting a quote for freight directly from the supplier. So when you're towards the end of your process, you can actually communicate directly with the supplier and they can actually handle the freight for you, which is very common. A lot of people don't use a third party agent. They just work directly with the manufacturer to handle the freight. And most manufacturers will have familiarity with Amazon and they'll be able to handle that for you. And then what you'll also need to do is set up an Amazon Seller Central account, which you can do here. I typically don't recommend doing this until you're about a month out from launching because it's a $40 a month, but you can do it sooner if you want just to poke around. Seller Central is a really cool tool. I'll be creating another video on Seller Central and how to upload your products into Seller Central. But this is really the main parts from the beginning to end of how I identify and find product opportunities. I will show one other thing that I do like to use. So this is Jungle Scout. And let's just do a hypothetical search since we're now interested in yarn. And we'll see here, Jungle Scout's cool because it overlays sales of various products. So you can see that these products are doing like 40,000. This one's doing 269,000. Obviously it's a very low price, but this one, again, we looked at before, is doing 865,000. So we know this is a good category from here, but say hypothetically, we're still broader in our search, art supplies. We can see that this is an interesting category, a little cheap though on the price. Let's see something going a little bit higher, volume sales. These markers are doing actually pretty good, 27,000, a little bit more competitive though. But this is also directionally helpful to find product opportunities and you can see the sales numbers of products like this. Again, this is a bundle. We didn't see one yarn bundle before and we also didn't see, and then we looked at those tufting guns. These are very industrial looking. We can make a really cool, friendly tufting gun. This is a bundle here. We can say they're doing $15,000, which is honestly pretty solid, but they only have a 4.1. So that's not very good. If you can make a good tufting gun. That's actually a really cool product opportunity. And then we looked at laser engraved plywood. A lot of these have really bad reviews. This one's doing 24,000, which is pretty solid. 29,000. And again, 30 bucks. So that's not, it's not bad at all. So keep these lessons in mind. I'll be getting into more detail on shipping and freight and handling after this, but this is directionally probably the most helpful and difficult part of launching an Amazon business is identifying a product opportunity. I also would recommend creating an LLC. I use Zen Business to create all my LLCs. Zen Business is really cool because it's just very straightforward as far as creating the LLC. It's essentially a software platform for creating LLCs and it's about $200 to create the 
LLC, which is really nice. And they do it really quickly. I recommend having everything under an LLC versus your personal business account. Because if you have an LLC, it separates your personal liability from your LLC business liability. Just in case you get in any trouble, you always want to have that separate. You also want to open a bank account under your LLC. And then you'll want to open that Amazon account under that LLC and bank account. So again, appreciate you guys following along. Let me know if I can get into more detail on anything on this video. I know I put a lot of information out here. And hopefully you, know, you guys learned some stuff from me. Subscribe and follow and whatever you do on YouTube and tune in for how I'm actually going to launch a product from beginning in. Maybe I'll launch this yarn product. Maybe I'll launch something else. But again, there's so many product opportunities out there. Differentiate yourself, solve problems, and that's how you'll be successful on Amazon as I have been. Thank you.